What's up guys, Chun is back. I got another uh, fourth generation standard match for you guys today. This is against uh, a fellow subscriber of mine, goes by the name of Kinu Kakito, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this was a battle that I had quite some time ago. It seems I keep going backwards with uh, this team as far as what I'm uploading. Um, I'm going from the latest battle, and this is actually back to the very first battle that I had with this team after making changes to it which I've made changes again since then. But um really apologize guys for the scenes of battles have been a little bit sparse, but um just trying to stick to fourth gen for right now before I jump fully into the fifth gen metagame. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. He's leading off with my champ and I'm leading off with Swampert. I decided to stay in here and just go immediately for the stealth rock, figuring I number one I would outspeed. And number two, um a lot of players like to predict the ghost switch in right off the bat so they immediately go for the payback first turn and not the dynamic punch but he doesn't do that he just sticks with deep punch i'm now going to go into dust nord just to show i have the ghost and then i'm immune to the dynamic punch and then i'm going to double i'm gonna switch back to swampert predicting the payback and he does go for it now um confusion hacks unfortunately for him does not work in his favor because uh, i'm able to get an earthquake off here and because of the leftovers recovery, the, another dynamic punch is not going to take Swampert out. Um, this is the max HP, max defense one. It doesn't have any special defense CVs on it. So I will be able to live this dynamic punch. And although I get confused again, as I said earlier, it's not going to help. I'm going to break right through the confusion. And I decided to stay in and risk it and go for another earthquake. Hopefully take him out. I knew a bullet punch wouldn't take me out, most likely. And I get it, and his Machamp goes down. So I've got a pretty early lead, 6-5. He's now going to bring in Togekiss at this point. And here I believe I went for the Roar. I don't think I even went for Ice Punch. I just went for the Roar, but he's going to go straight for the Air Slash. Just going to leave Swampert in at this point. Just so I can get a safe switch in. He's got the leftovers, and I was thinking this was a... Initially this was a Paraflinch set, and this was a pretty big mistake on my part. He's going to go for the nasty plot as I bring Skarmory in. And I go for the taunt. I should have immediately went for the whirlwind at that point. Um, but I honestly thought he would go for thunder wave. Again, thinking it was a paraflint set. And so next turn, he is going to go for the aura sphere. I'm going to whirlwind now. Um, and that damage was crucial. Just keep that in mind, guys, as you'll see later on in the match. Um, I really could have kept Skarmory healthier, but anyway, he's going to bring, uh, I get the worst possible switch in Heat Trance, so I'm going to have to switch out, knowing that the Fire Stab is coming, and I go to Suicune, and it is Fire Blast, and <clears throat> I take it pretty well, and he's going to switch out here, so that tells me he is Choice Scarfed, he's going to go to Jirachi, and I'm just going to go straight away for the Hydro Pump not going to try to set up anything or even go for a roar. i just go right for the damage. And uh, I'm going to switch out here, predicting either the Thunder Punch or the Grass Knot. And he is going to go for the Thunder Punch. I'm going to go into Dust Nor, figuring I could take either move um, pretty well. He does get a crit, which is unfortunate. Dust Nor could have lasted a lot longer, but Dust Nor did a great job this match. You guys will see. Um, definitely pulled its weight so he's gonna switch back to Heatran. Um, Heatran's a pretty common switch into pretty much any ghost especially bulky ones so but I am not the standard spin blocker I, this is a sub punching set so I'm gonna set up the sub on his Heatran switching um, I believe he realized that focus punch was coming at that point I was, why else would you run substitute on Dustnor and uh, he's gonna switch to Cresselia doesn't take a whole lot 
I unfortunately get the Parahax trying to go for the Shadow Sneak. I probably should have switched out there looking back on it because the only reason Crest would come in was is to try to you know set something up so he does set up a reflect so now the plan is to stall out the reflect turns which is most likely going to be eight turns i was assuming light clay at the time i wasn't paying attention to see if he had leftovers or not so uh, i got a will-o-wisp off on the on the Jirachi just to weaken it and he goes for an iron head and it doesn't even break the sub so that's awesome um here i decide not to finish him off with the shadow sneak and just go for another sub because uh, I wanted a full substitute and not a weakened sub that could be taken out by anything in one hit so that was my whole reasoning there and I figured he was in range for burn to take him out anyway at the end of the turn so now he's gonna bring Togekiss back in and unfortunately I forgot about the reflect still being up because I was surprised how little damage Togekiss took from this focus punch and he's able to get a nasty plot up and it's not, Focus Punch is just not going to do that much. And again, didn't even realize that Reflect was still up. And I'm stubbornly going to stay in with Dusnor and just fire Focus Punches away. He is able to get an Air Slash off that will easily break the sub. And <clears throat> I think I said at this point that I just try to leave, I just leave Dusnor in at this point. And uh, it's pretty unfortunate. And the damage from Skarmory is going to be crucial later on. And I'll explain that in the next couple of turns here, guys. But uh, he gets a crit on the Air Slash, which in the long run, it really didn't matter. The uh, I would have lived it, but there really wasn't too much Dustnor was going to be able to do against Togekiss. And at that point, Dustnor would have definitely been fodder. Would have tried to get a Will-O-Wisp or something like that. But I probably went for, I believe that's what I went for at that point. So now I'm going to bring Dragonite in. And I go for the extreme speed, now realizing the Reflect is still up, and it finally wears off. And he's able to get a Roost off, and it's at this point that I realize it is a defensive Nasty Plotter. Most likely, might be offensive, but I'm pretty sure it's a defensive Nasty Plotter. So, he's able to finish my Dragonite off with a plus two Air Slash. I bring Suicune in at this point, hoping to get a final roar off so I can stop this Togekiss from sweeping my team but unfortunately I do get flinched because of the Serene Grace and he does outspeed me well it's roar never mind it has minus priority so now I'm gonna bring Skarmory in at this point hoping I can live in air slash but I don't and that's where the damage from earlier really was crucial I could have, if I had gone immediately for Whirlwind earlier, Skarmory would be at full health and I could take at least one Air Slash and have another chance to phase this thing out, but that doesn't happen. Skarm does do go down. I bring Lucario in. I go for the Ice Punch. Close Combat would have done more damage, but I was going for the Hacks, honestly, because even Close Combat is not a one-hit KO, so I was just hoping to get the Freeze at that point, but I don't get it. Ice Punch is a two-hit KO anyway, so... He goes for the R Sphere that'll easily take Lucario out, and my last guy is Suicune, and it's gonna go down to an Air Slash, and that is gonna be the game. But it was a good game, Kino Kakito. Um, guess I didn't do too bad for the first match on with this team, but um, anyway, guys, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you love what you saw. And uh, Chun is out. Peace.